I get out of there before they <laughs> threw water on me. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming. So this is a typical uh, USC UCLA rivalry game. Very physical. Uh, both teams played extremely hard. Uh, they're an outstanding team. Very well coached. Coach Cronin does a great job, and uh, their players uh, are really hard to guard. Uh, I thought our players, our guys, did an amazing job in the second half, being down 12 at halftime, coming out with a lot of fire. And I thought the key was to get back in the game pretty quickly, which we did. And then uh, uh, we just defended and tried to rebound the best we could. So very, very proud of our players. We've really improved as a team. And uh, hopefully everybody saw that. Andy, can you talk about Boogie? No turnovers tonight. Yeah, six assists and no turnovers. 31 points, 27 in the second half. That's a pretty special game. And uh, we started to isolate him. We tried to set ball screens. And, Get him on some of the defenders that we thought we, he could attack. And, uh, he did a nice job of making the right decision and made a couple big, big shots for us. How much did it mean for him just to have that performance, especially given the way the last USC UCLA game ended with that offensive foul? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, Boogie uh, was upset last game at Pauley where he missed a shot to tie it at the end, also was, was called for an offensive uh, screen. With, 15 seconds left in the game, so he was disappointed. But hey, we're a team. That one play doesn't decide a game usually. But when you when you have close games down uh, in the last minute, you like to win some. So uh, tonight uh, didn't come down the last minute. Our guys did their job. Did that comeback at Pauley give you a base for a belief at halftime tonight that you could make the run that you did? I think it was 27 to six over the first 12 to 30. To really, you guys took complete control of the game at that point. Well, I, I think our team has been very streaky at times this year offensively. In the first half, we were up 14-9, to nine, and we didn't score for about I don't know how many minutes. Uh, so we knew we had to do a better job offensively. Boogie was 0 for 5 at halftime from the three-point line. And your best players have to step up in games like this. Uh, Drew and Boogie are best offensive players, and, and Drew had four turnovers at halftime, and Boogie was 2 for 7, 5, 0 for 5 from 3. So uh, we were getting pretty clean looks, but we, we weren't uh, – playing with the aggressiveness on offense because UCLA overplays are very physical. And I think we, we couldn't get in the bonus. We couldn't even get a shooting foul up because um, uh, we weren't doing our job offensively. So I think uh, the last game, every game is different. Uh, but we, we've been down quite a few times this season and have come back at one. Coach, what were the defensive adjustments at the half? Uh, you know, they started off uh, scoring early. Tiger Campbell had 10. A half ended the game with only 14 points. What were the adjustments made? Well, we really started to hard hedge the ball screens, try to put pressure on their guards so Campbell couldn't get in the lane and the other guys. And then our big our big players, uh, our centers, Josh and Vince, did a really good job of getting out of the ball screens and then getting back before they could reverse the ball or throw it into their bigs at the rim. And uh, our other players would tag on the ball screen roll and get back to the perimeter. And the three point line was a huge factor. Uh, we, we keep leaving David Singleton open which is frustrating. He's a, he's a really good player, uh, but you focus so much on Hawkins and Campbell, and then here comes Singleton making four, four threes, and, and uh, that's when they're at their best, when uh, other guys in that team make shots. Uh, coach, uh, Coach, right here. Um, this is the most media I've seen in here in the last 15 years. What does that say about USC basketball? Well, it's, it's our 10th year as a staff. Coach Capco has been with me the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, other guys like Jason Hart have moved on, but now, Coach Mulley's been with me five or six years. Mike Sweat's six, seven years. Curtis Schultz, our strength coach, been with me the whole time. He was my first hire 10 years ago. Uh, coach Morris just joined us uh, last year. But, but we've had tremendous stability, including our trainer, J.Y., who's a miracle worker. Uh, he's been with me the whole time. Uh, so we have great stability on our staff. And, and we try to build a program that can compete within our league and compete nationally. And I'm uh, very happy and very proud of our uh, – the job our assistant coaches and our staff do on a daily basis. Kirk Harris, our director of scouting, and Desmond Farmer, they've been with, with us a long time. And so, so every day when we come into work, well, we try to make this place a, a better team, a better program. And, and that, but that's a, it all comes down to your players, who you recruit, how you develop them. Uh, very proud of our 100% graduation rate in 10 years, the guys that have stayed. And uh, our players get better. Uh, seven guys in the NBA last five years. So, so I think. Uh, what, what's special for, for coaches is uh, you're in this game long enough 
and, and those, those, those players that helped build this thing come back, like Anthony Melton and Jonah, Jonah Matthews and Jordan McLaughlin and Chimezi Metu and Anyak and, and, uh and of course the Mobleys, uh, Kevin Porter Jr. is in the NBA now, and, and, and so Nick Rakosovic was a heck of a player. So those guys kind of got us over the hump uh, to rebuild this program, and uh, now they're on, uh, they're, they're on their way making uh, great careers for themselves still playing basketball. And now we have a new wave of guys, and, but that success uh, throughout our program has allowed us to re recruit Vincent Ubuchuku out of San Antonio, Trey White, uh, Isaiah Sellers, et cetera, Johnny Wright. And, and now we have the sixth ranked recruiting class in the country coming in next year with Isaiah Collier and Silas Demering Jr., who's here, and, and uh, Aaron Page, a big kid. So uh, uh, we're, we're very uh, proud of where our program is right now. However, this is a long season, and, and uh, we need to uh, uh, stay focused because in this game, anything can happen. And uh, if you watch us sometimes, uh, we're a little streaky. So, so we have to, uh, we have to Enjoy this win and realize there's a lot of basketball to be played. Coach, you talk about the home court advantage all the time. Can you talk about tonight's atmosphere? Because it seemed yeah, like this might have been the loudest I've heard this arena this, before. This, I thought last year's game and this year's game were the two best atmospheres we've played in in 10 years. And uh, last year and, and this year were, were as good as any place in the country. I've been coaching off and on for 28 years in the NBA and in college, coaching the ACC. Coaching, so I've been doing this a long time. And if you go to some of the arenas, our home crowd this year and last year at the UCLA game was as good as anywhere I've ever been. And it's such a big advantage for our players. We would not have come back from 12 down at halftime without that energy that, that the fans provide. And we're very, very thankful for that. And you part of your plan to how much um, this team I'll get you next. You talked a lot about how much this team has improved since the beginning of the season. What kind of statement do you feel like this is entering February? Well, we need a big uh, statement win. Uh, we almost had it at Pauline three weeks ago. And uh, we won a great game on the road at Arizona State on Saturday. Our team is playing very well. They've improved a lot. And uh, that's what we like to see. I mean, now we have Vince back, and he's a difference maker with his length. Uh, he may not be a huge scorer right now, but he uh, really creates uh, uh, problems with his length and his athleticism inside. And he's a good rebounder. Uh, so uh, it's fun to see the progression of teams. Uh, this, this team is... Uh, we weren't sure what we had, especially after the first game. We lost on opening night, and we, we could have played anybody and lost that game. We were, we were so bad. Uh, so we're very proud of our guys hanging in there and, and improve. And um, is it part of your recruiting strategy to have Silas here to be able to tell him this is what Billy's like? Well, he's already signed with us, so we don't, we don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> so his, uh, his family wanted to come out here. He wanted to come out here for a game. and. Uh, I think his high school team's 24 and three right now. He's having an amazing senior year. Uh, what a great player he is! Uh, but I think it's cool to for have him have, have him see this atmosphere because we need that next wave of guys. And Drew and Boogie leave to come in here and uh, and help us keep this uh, this winning uh, in the future. Coach, where does this Boogie Ellis rivalry performance rank in your eyes over these past 10 years against UCLA? Well, I'd say Boogie this year and Drew Peterson last year pretty special performances. Um, Drew had 27, I think 12 rebounds, 27 points, 12 rebounds, five assists last year, and Boogie has 27 in the second half, 31, six assists, no turnovers. I mean, that's pretty special. So uh, those guys, as I said, are two most talented offensive players. They're all, all first team all-conference, and uh, you need those players to step up in big games, and they did. How, how much easier does like a Boogie Ellis make your job when you're playing a tough defensive team like UCLA the shot clock's getting low, and he can just go get his at the end of the shot clock and do his thing. Well, we, we started, uh, we, we just, we, we changed our offensive uh, style in the second half. Instead of trying to get ball movement, we just went right to Boogie and Drew and put them in isolation and made them, had them create for, for themselves and for others. And, and Boogie, when he gets it going, he's really hard to guard because he can drive it, he can pass it, and, and he can step back and shoot the deep three. Uh, but but it, it was he, he played like a first round draft pick tonight. It was very impressive. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Okay.